so I'm going to introduce myself uh, briefly here and um, then switch over to sharing my screen um, because you guys are here to learn about Canvas and not see, not see me. And what we found with my summer school this summer is that when my, my camera is off, it actually gives them a little bit better um, reception. So sometimes um, it bogs down when, when the video is going at the same time as a screen share. Um, but my name is Gary Lufton. I am um, a business and IT teacher at Salem High School. Uh, this will be my fourth year um, at the high school. As you'll see here in a minute, I'm going to be teaching the computer science courses um, starting this year. Um, so that my fun that I get to do is um, teach five new classes this year. Um, this is my, this will be my 17th year in education. So I, I've been, I've been around for a while. I've worked in Hampton City Schools and York County Schools, um, both in the Hampton Roads area. Um, and one of my roles at, with York County, which is pertinent to this, um, was that I was actually the online learning specialist for the, their school division for three years. Um, so I have, I have had the privilege of working with teachers and students um, that were teaching online classes um, and also students who were um, taking online classes. And in many cases, they were completely full-time students um, through our school division. Um, so a lot of the stuff I'm going to share with you today is um, from those, those three years that I did that job um, and kind of the collective wisdom we established um, as, a, as a program in York County. Um, and also some of the things that we talked about um, here in Salem, uh, having, had a, having had conversations with Jamie Soltist and um, Dana Wells um, and Jennifer Dean was, was part of their conversations before I was looped in on that. Um, but so all these things are coming from those places. Um, I will just say right off the bat, like what I'm going to share with you today is not intended to be a, this is the only right way to do it. This is intended to be, this is a right way to do it. Um, because again, from, from my experience and what I'm, I'm more worried about thinking about my, my colleagues here is, um, we're all going to have to do something that we've, we've basically never done before and figuring out that process can take a lot of time, can take a lot of energy. And I think our time and energy will hopefully be better spent on um, instructional activities and assessment activities and to try to minimize the amount of time that we spend thinking about like, how do I set up my Canvas site um, to make this work for my students? So um, I am gonna go ahead and share my screen at this point. Um, and I, even though there's a lot of us, I would encourage you guys, if there's anything um, that you have questions about as you're going, feel free to jump in and interrupt me. This is obviously a lot harder setting to like, you know, physically raise a hand because I won't see that. Um, so whatever way you can think of to, to jump in, put it in the chat window, um, just speak up and I'll pause for a second to listen to you. And there is actually a hand raise in here. I have students in my, my summer school class that use that. So you're welcome to do that as well. Um, but I do want to encourage you guys, just because I'm talking, don't take that to mean like, you can't ask a question, just jump in and, and say something here. Um, we'll, we'll discuss whatever you have going on. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen now and stop my video, because again, I think that has helped um, at least my summer school class be able to um, get better connectivity and hear me better in this format. Uh, so I know this is preaching to the choir a little bit, but sometimes you gotta preach to the choir just to make sure you're all on the same sheet of music. Um, our driving question that we're, we're focusing on today for this, um, this morning PD um, is we're, we're asking the question like, how as a, an online teacher are you gonna establish the procedures, expectations, and norms that you need to establish for your kids to succeed? Probably all of us um, you know, have experienced the first days of school by um, Harry and Rosemary Wong. We, we, We've read that book. We kind of like use that as a teacher guide to making sure that we start off the school year really well. Um, and, and the things that, that the Wong say in that book um, don't go out the window here. Um, we, we still think it's super important, and it is super important, um, to establish some really good things to start your school year off um, even if it's an online course. So even for our kids that are gonna be completely online, we're never gonna see them physically in the building, um, we have to have a way 
to do those things that we typically do when we stand up in front of kids the first week of school, they start getting to know us, we start getting to know them, they start feeling like they understand what they're gonna be doing when they walk into your class every day. Um, we want the same thing to happen when they click on our, our class in Canvas. We want them to, to know that they have this expectation that they can figure out what they're supposed to be doing every day and feel comfortable approaching the course. Um, so, and, and again, this is where I'm, I'm preaching the choir. Like you guys, you guys know this, um, you know, we've talked about this a lot as a, at least at Salem High School. I know some of you guys are not at the high school, but I imagine in your conversations with your admin, you guys have been talking about these same things. Um, but we have, according to Curtis, approximately 10% of our student population that is saying right now they're going to elect to take all of their classes online. And we still have a month before school starts um you know so that number could potentially even go up it could possibly go down as well but that that seems to be the number that i've been hearing from um uh, dr hicks um, about what's going on with this but even if we take away that group of students for a second we know that best case scenario here our kids are going to be with us two days and online three days so that means you know even the kids that are quote unquote coming to school are still going to have 60 percent of their coursework done on time um, and this year, there is the expectation that kids are learning and growing um, into this with the skills based on the standards and competencies that your courses expect. Um, so there's not really a, a wiggle room here this year to say, um, you know, if they learn or don't learn at the end of the year, it's okay. I know in Salem, we, we pushed really hard to make sure kids were continuing to learn. Um, and I think by and large, we did a good job of that. But there was a little bit of wiggle room last year. And this year, there's just, just not as much. Uh, and then, of course, this is the, the, the terrible scenario here, right? The thing that we're all, um, I shouldn't say we're all, the thing that I'm, I'm worried about happening and kind of feel like there's a chance that it will. Um, if we have an outbreak in a school and all of a sudden everybody is completely online for a period of time, like how is that going to um, impact and adjust what we do? So that's, again, some reasons why this strong start is so important. So we're going um, to dig into Canvas today. I have... Um, I have a course that I'm building for this upcoming school year that I'm going to be taking you guys through um, to show you some of the things that Canvas does. And as I mentioned at the beginning here, um, you know, what I'm showing you is not the only way, but it's a really good way. And I think um, one of the things that, that are going to be really important conversations in your buildings um, this year with your, with your administrators leading the way on that is thinking about how we can give kids and parents for that matter who are going to be um, probably having to help in, in a lot of this especially with our younger students but how can we give kids and parents kind of a unified approach to doing this online learning thing so like when they come into my class the kids will know okay i'm supposed to go here i'm supposed to go there but how different will it be between my class and, and miss carter's class or how different will it be between Ms. Carter's class and Ms. Harless's class. Um, so the more kind of uniformity we can do, the easier it's going to be for kids and students. Um, so again, I, I can't make a declaration about like the school division is saying we all have to do things this way, like that's way above my pay grade. Um, but I can say from my experience, like the more uniformity you have amongst your teachers, the better off you are. Um, and again, I've experienced that with kids and, and had that conversation with teachers firsthand, trying to get everybody on the same page. Um, so that, that is part of, the, part of the thinking here is, let's have kind of a common, a common thinking about the approach here. Um, but again, there's gonna, be, there's gonna be wiggle room even within what I'm sharing with you guys. Um, so Canvas, if you guys have never used Canvas before as a student or as a teacher, um, we talk about our, our learning management system as a tool, but I would like you guys to think about Canvas um, as either a toolbox or even as like the shed where you have all of the tools that you need to do basically any job that you could possibly think of. Um, so Canvas has a lot to it. So I'm not going to focus in this session on how to use all of the tools. Um, Virtual Virginia has come up with some um, learning modules that do a really good job of that. So instead, I'm gonna focus on, again, the workflow that goes into um, using Canvas. So a kid goes into your course, how do they know what to do? How do they know where to go? Um, so you're gonna see this in detail here, but these are our four objectives for today. 
um, identifying the purposes of some core pages that we should have um, ideally on, on everybody's course. So when you set up a course, um, there's basically five links on the left-hand side for your course that everybody should have. Um, and so again, you'll see that in a second. So we're gonna talk about the purpose of each of those. We're gonna look at how to manipulate those things. And then we're going to um, talk about at the end modules and grading and kind of the role that they play. So with all that being said, I am switching over to my dashboard in Canvas. Um, so if you guys haven't gotten into your Salem Canvas site yet, um, you certainly can do that while we're doing this. I've got a chat message coming up, so let me go address that. Yeah, um, Ms. Craft, I will, um, I will actually put that little um, piece of information in there. Um, I'm trying to think of where the best place to put it is because I don't necessarily know how I'll have everybody here. Well, let me just do this. If you would like this presentation, I'm just going to um, quickly share it with everybody here. Yeah, and again, it's not too much. Um, this is the presentation piece and we're going to, um, we're also going to post this video online also after the fact. Um, so, so both the, the slides that I just shared, which I just gave you guys the link to, and this video will be, be shared out. Um, again, I know, I know for Salem High School, that's going to be shared out through Scott, and he's going to put that link on the spreadsheet that we have. Um, I'm not sure about the other schools, but I would imagine um, whatever way that you were made aware of this session, you should hopefully be able to find something on there. Um, okay. So in, our da in your dashboard here, and again, I gave you guys the link to how to get to Salem High School's um, Canvas site. Um, yours will probably start out with just a sandbox, an unpublished sandbox. Um, so I'm not gonna use my sandbox course, I'm actually gonna use my com computer science foundation course because again, I have um, four other courses that I have to do, so I figured it would make a lot more sense for me to use my time on one of my five courses um, instead of um, instead of one that didn't do anything for me. Um, so what you would do here if you don't have any courses yet is just hit the button to start a new course or you can go right into your sandbox if you just want to play around with it today. Um, and I would encourage the use of the sandbox. I did play around with my sandbox um, before I started building these courses um, just to see what I could do in the sandbox and it's, it's, it's basically just a regular course. It just you won't have any kids in it. Um, so yeah, so use the start new course button. The navigation here on the left, this is our Canvas site level navigation. Um, and so you will, use, you will use that to do things like check your inbox where students might be able to communicate with you. Um, there is the in commons, which has some learning modules that you can use um, for your course, your courses. Um, the calendar, which we'll talk about is a, is a really important part of this and primarily the dashboard. Uh, yeah, so Ms. Brew put in the, um, the, the window here, you'll be able to transfer work um, from the sandbox too. And that's absolutely true. You can, you can move course content between any of your courses um, really easily in Canvas. And when we get to the sections on modules, Ms. Brew, um, I think so, Ms. Ms. Schumer, I think they do. I think that's what they started out as and I changed, I changed the name on mine. But yeah, Ms. Brew, the answer there is, I'll show you guys when we get into modules, how you can import and export content from one course to another. Um, so we will, we will cover that topic. All right, so I'm gonna go into my computer science foundations class. And the, the first page we get to here is the home page. Now I do wanna point out, if you guys go into your class, and I'll go into one of my unpublished ones to show you what you'll probably see right away. Um, so I haven't done anything in this class. You'll probably see a page that looks like this. Um, so it's gonna ask you to create a new module and it's gonna tell you that your course is currently unpublished. Um, and you're gonna have kind of a, just a disarray of um, these links over here on the left side. Some of them will have the eyeballs crossed out, some of them won't. Um, we're gonna address all of this stuff. Um, so don't, don't sweat it if yours says that. Um, but what I'm gonna show you right now is how I came up with my homepage, and really more importantly, before I even show you how I came up with it, 
like what the point of this is, right? So when you look at, when you look at this homepage, um, really the whole point of the homepage is just to point students in the right direction to get started. Um, so I have at the top of here, it has an announcement. I'll come back to that in a second. I'm gonna focus on the core um, section of this page where I, I made a little banner um, for the course and then I made a little introduction video in YouTube. Um, the introduction video is very short. It's about two and a half minutes long. Um, I think YouTube has an algorithm that they figure out at what point in the video your eyes are closed and they make that the main page um, of, the, of the video. So, you know, I'm probably going to have to redo that one, but it's there for right now, so it can work. Um, and then I have a section called getting started. And this, again, is all about pointing people in the right direction. Um, so there's really not a whole lot on the home page and we had a lot of conversation about this um, and the reason why we came to this kind of final conclusion about having a minimal amount on the home page um, is again it's about the workflow for students so if you if you keep putting more and more and more stuff on the home page it just becomes really large and unwieldy um, so this would be again this would be something that I would strongly encourage as a best practice um, for setting up your home page is to have, you know, two little sections. One is a welcome section, and I think welcome videos are a great way, um, especially for your kids that are taking this class completely online, to see you, to hear you, to get a little sense of who you are um, from that short video. <clears throat> and then after they get that sense, then you say, all right, so you're going to get started with this course. Here's what you need to do first. Um, so before we go and follow this link, I want to take a second here and show you how I made this page. So again, with all of these links we have over here on the side of Canvas, um, the one that I use to make this home page is called Pages. So when I click on Pages, um, this is my front page, my home page. I'll show you why, why that matters in a second. But if I click on View All, it'll tell me all the different pages that are in here. So you can create a new page by clicking the plus page button in the top right. And this is where you would really do your basic editing. Welcome to CSF, which is my computer's um, science foundations and include your information here. Um, so I'm not gonna go through how to do all those things you have the, the editor options here, and then your ellipse on the right-hand side lets you do some other things, add hyperlinks, add images, add video. So all of these things are kind of are established in here, and it feels a lot like Google Docs or Microsoft Word, so it's a GUI editor. If you are so brave and bold, you can come in here and do HTML, um, but everything can be done without that. So um, this is a, a wonderful little editor. Um, again, that is really simple to use. At the end of it, you would save and publish this page. So it becomes one of your, um, one of your pages here. And then what you would do is you would go home and you would click this button on the right-hand side called Choose Home Page. And you can either Pick a course activity stream, the pages front page, course modules, assignment list, syllabus. You can pick from any of these pages, but because we just made a page, we choose our course front page. So right now I have it as the home page that I originally made, but you can change it to whatever page you want. So now, because I just made this change, this is my, oh, try that one more time. No, oh, I have to do it over here, sorry. Use this front page. Great. Once I've made that the front page, you can see the text right there. Click home. There we go. And it has the basic information. So that's, again, that's kind of the easy and quick way um, <clears throat> to make a home page. Probably making the video will be the, the most difficult part of that. Okay. Um, the other thing that I did with this home page is at the very top we have the announcements link and you'll notice a connection here um, in my getting started section I, I told students in the first sentence what we're going to learn in the course and then in the second sentence i told them 
where they need to go first, which is the announcements link on the left hand navigation menu. So this this navigation menu is the course navigation menu. And then there's directions in the getting started with CFS announcement that they need to learn about Canvas. So I want them to get used to from the home page going right to their announcements. And right now you can see I have two announcements, but I will point out my getting started one is the one that I want them to click on. Students actually won't see this announcement because it's delayed. So on that right hand side, we have a delayed announcement because I don't want kids to see this announcement yet. I want them just to focus on what I've asked them to do first. Um, so getting started with CSF. Uh, Ms. Ms. Harvey Cutter, the answer to that is yes. Um, so I'm not sure in the Canvas setup for Salem if they have made it so that you can see other people's courses, but even if they haven't, the other teacher could export whatever they would, whatever they have, and then you can import it into yours. Um, so again, that, that's a good question for the, the specifics of how to do that to the, your ITRT. Um, but the answer is yes, in general, you can import courses from other teachers. It's just a question of what are the mechanics set up to do that. Okay. Um, so this is my first announcement. So when kids, they go look at my video, they go read what the course is about, and they come in here and I have directions for them. So the first thing I want them to do is learn more about this course. I'm gonna open that in a new tab um, so you guys can see what that is. And then it walks them through, as you read this syllabus, be careful to pay attention to these three things. Um, and then there's a syllabus quiz at the end of this. And I've linked them um, to all of these things right from the announcement, because one of the things we want to do is, again, make the navigation of this as simple as possible. So instead of, instead of constantly telling kids, go to this link, go to this link, go to this link, we want to give them the information right there. So they don't have to, um, you know, they don't have to try to figure out how to navigate four or five clicks to my course syllabus. They can just click on the course syllabus right from here to see um, to see that that Google Doc. Similarly, you know, we don't want them to have to navigate through a bunch of links to get to the quiz, um, especially because I don't have quizzes visible. Um, so this is one thing that as we go through this, you'll see as well that I only have five links visible and we really wanna keep this number low. So we don't wanna have all of these links visible for kids to go see because then they're just gonna go out and, and explore different stuff in the course. Again, it's all about being streamlined. It's all about trying to put kids right where they need to be um, with as few clicks as possible. Um, in the world of web design, that's like two clicks. If you can't get there with two clicks, um, then, then that's not great. Um, <clears throat> So this, this walks them through everything I need them to do um, to start the course. And that's their, this is really their introduction. This is their how to, how to do everything they need to do in Canvas first day kind of stuff. So my kids that are gonna be in school on Monday and Tuesday, I'm gonna walk them through how to do these things. But my kids that are completely online, they should have all the resources they need here to do everything they need to do. And then that first online learning day Wednesday, I can, I can pause, check and see how those online only kids are doing um, and communicate with them as, as needed to help them out with this. Um, so these are the, again, the first two things. Um, the home page, this is just your landing spot. What do I go from here? And then your announcements, this is where you're gonna post everything kids need to do. So this is the, you know, kind of before we get started with anything. And then I also have a post that I've gotten prepared for when kids start doing work. Um, so this will be the second half of the first week. And one of the things that we talked about is a, a good strategy um, is setting up um, kind of a table like this. And again, you can create the table in, um, in the editor. So I'll edit this post so you can see that. The table is right here so we can make tables uh, quickly and easily with our tools. Um, and we separated the work for the hybrid and the online only students. For, for my first week right now, I really haven't gotten that far. It's still July. Um, so I just made it the same information for both of them. Um, 
but this is a, again, this is another good practice is to kind of have it set up. So a kid that's doing the online only sees what they need to do. And your kids that come into class, they're probably not doing the exact same thing as your online only kids. There's going to be a little bit of a difference. Um, you know, for me, I would, I'm probably going to do um, an activity, an activity in class that talks about confidentiality, integrity, and accessibility, the CIA triad. Um, I'll still have them take the quiz that comes with this little module, but I probably won't have them go through this module just on their own sitting in class because I have them in class with me. So I want to engage them and I want to um, work with them at, as teacher to student, not just have them come and do online work while they're physically in school. So let me cancel that. Okay, um, the next pieces we want to look at is, um, again, going back to our announcements, we wanted kids to come in and look at the syllabus. Um, so the syllabus, again, is one of these five pages that we need to have. So when we look at the syllabus, um, and again, you have a lot of flexibility in this. This is just what I chose for mine, um, but I think it makes sense. We have the information about the course. So a little bit more detail than what I put on the homepage. And I also have a link to that Google Doc that has the course syllabus and the agreement with it that we tend to give to students on the first week of school. Um, I have a section about navigating Canvas. So really a lot like what I'm doing right here with you guys, I'm gonna have a video series um, showing students, what's the first thing I should do when I go into your Canvas course? What is um, the way that I get to find the assignments that I'm supposed to do? What is the way that I communicate with the teacher when I have a question? How do I get help? Um, so having a series of super, super short videos about how I want students to do that um, is going to be in here as well. I haven't finished creating that yet, so it's not posted, um, but that's what's going to be in here. Um, and I'm going to highlight the announcements video um, because, again, like the, the thing I think is most important is a kid gets into your course. Do they know where to go first? Do they know what to go look at to figure out, okay, I, I'm in my course, but I don't have any idea what to do. Um, that's the that's the process that we have to establish right away the first two days of school is a kid goes into your canvas course where do they go where do they look um, how do I get them there I gave them a little information about me as a teacher so some of my history um, I have them look at how to contact me so I like to use email and remind so those are the two things that I included in here um, and I actually put <laughs> Join Remind as one of my first first day of school activities is join our Remind class. Um, and then course communication, I have two pages that I set up. And again, this is something that I chose to do. It's not, it's not something that's necessarily required, but I think it's a good idea. Um, there's a FAQ page where I have given students some information about the common things that they're going to ask so they can go find the FAQ page. And I also have a help desk um, discussion board set up for them so that students can come in here and ask questions um, but they can also answer each other's questions so this is a true discussion board where kids can talk to each other um, as well as me um, okay so this is the um, the syllabus page creating this um, the syllabus page is already set up for you you just have to go to edit um, the one thing that that you'll probably not do the first time. And so that's why I'm talking about it right now. Um, there's a button down here that says show course summary. So it should be unchecked, but I'm going to leave it checked just to show you what happens. So when I show course summary at the bottom of this syllabus page, it's going to give all of the assignments that I have created so far. So any, um, anything that I've given students to do right now will show up in here if I leave the course summary checked. Um, and you can probably imagine as the course goes on, this list is going to get huge and unwieldy because that's just one week worth, worth of stuff. So I want that to not be as huge and unwieldy. So I uncheck show course syllabus. And then that, that goes away. Um, okay, so the, I only have a couple more things, so we'll, we'll definitely be under my hour that I'm, I'm allotted here to, to get you guys this, so I'll, I'll hopefully be able to answer lots of questions um, since we've only had a few so far. 
Um, the last two links that are available over here, and again, the way you know a link is available is because um, it doesn't have a little eyeball with a with the X through it on the side. So these are the these are the only five things that are available. The next one is something called modules, and this is where um, you should be setting up what you want students to do. So this is probably, in all honesty, going to be the biggest transition in terms of thinking from what you're used to if you've used things like Schoology or Google Classroom. Because in Google Classroom and Schoology, you tend to create individual assignments that just show up like in a stream. Um, but with this, what we want to do is we want to have a complete um, learning module process. Um, so I'm going to show you guys two examples that aren't aren't my course right now because I again this takes a little bit of time and I I really haven't had that much time to work on this at this point. Um, but I will show you two that exist um, developed by Virtual Virginia. So the first one is going to be in the Economics and Personal Finance course that Virtual Virginia made, and the second one will be in the Growing with Canvas course that Virtual Virginia provides to teachers to help us learn how to use the tools. Um, so over here on the left, I'm going to go to modules. And so module one, I have these lessons that are set up in here. It's going slowly, but it'll be okay. So the way that they've set up these lessons is they've made pages for each kind of step along the way of the lesson. So if you think about the lesson as here's what we're doing today in class, we start out with um, kind of the overview of the lesson. And then it gets into the objectives of the lesson. And Virtual Virginia doesn't give textbooks. So this is basically the textbook information for the course. And I will say, do not put it on yourself that you have to like create all this. Um, go and get this from, from somebody else or somewhere else. You know, don't, don't try to create this much content for your courses. This is what Virtual Virginia has done. But the principle, the idea here is you put your learning activities and kind of group them together. And then there's an assessment at the end. So again, if I go back to the modules just to show you kind of the workflow, um, a kid would come in here, look at the opening activity for the lesson, objectives, read the content, do a little application so that could either be assignment or review activity and take the assessment at the end. Um, so that is really the same way that I've, I've set up kind of mine is I've done it by the week. So the first week of school, um, these are the activities that we're gonna do uh, and they have the different dates that they're set with. So I've, I've gone ahead and set up another um, module for week two. The way you set up these modules is you click this button. It says add module. So add module and I'll go ahead and make this week three resources and I don't know when those dates are, but I'll just lock it up so it doesn't matter. Okay. And then from in here, you can add whatever you want. So if you want to add um, a new page into this, you just have to go create that page, select it, and add it in here. If you want to add an assignment in here, you create an assignment in Canvas and add it in here. If you want to create a quiz and put it in here, again, you have to go create these things first but you just add them into the module in the order that you'd like to have them. Yeah, so both of those things are true. Um, you can change the order um, and then you can create new modules at the top and the bottom, absolutely. So, um, so if you wanna move this module, we just tell it to, it'll, it'll automatically create at the bottom, but then we just tell it to move. So if we wanna move it and we wanna put it right at the top, you just use the little ellipse here on the side and tell it where you wanna go. Um, so I want this one to go after my week one resources since it's week one. But you could certainly go the other way. And then if you want the quiz to come here or this assignment to be first, um, you can do all those things. And right now, again, looking at, I want to show you guys this feature of Canvas. My week one, all of these things have little green checks, which means they're all published. They're all visible. My week two is unchecked. 
if I were to check it, it's now visible and I uncheck it and it's hidden. So you can work ahead. Like you can create all of these things and kids won't see them until you, until you make them visible. So there's a, a, a great way to create a whole bunch of um, content before you want kids to look at it and then just leave it hidden um, until the time you want kids to see it. Yeah, so Ms. Craft is asking about the Virtual Virginia modules. Virtual Virginia is making their content available to us. Um, but again, I don't, I don't know the mechanics of how to get to that. Um, so that's, that's an ITRT question um, or a Jamie Soltis question. Is how do we go get that content? But everything, everything we've been told is that they're making that content available to us. Um, so where do we upload things we have created to add to modules? Um, yeah, and Paige, that's true too. Commons is another place over here on the left. That's another place that you can look for content. Um, I'm gonna come back to Robin for a second. Robin, what do you mean? Um, where do we upload things we have created? So do you mean like, um, like if you have like a Google doc that has an assignment in it, where would you create that assignment? Or do you literally mean you create it in Canvas and how do you put it into the module in Canvas? That's what, that's what I mean. How do you like, well, I mean, I guess I mean both things. Like how do okay. you, I guess I mean both. <laughs> okay. So let me, let me walk you through that then. So if I wanted to create an assignment, I would click on the assignments link. This is visible, okay. but not to students. And um, so this can be set up in terms of units. Again, I'm setting mine up in terms of weeks just because I tend to think about it that way a little bit more. Um, but you can set, set up units however you want. So like if you had, you know, your unit one is whatever, create a unit one unit. And then here, I'm gonna come down and make an assignment. I'm gonna call it, um, economics because I'm teaching about that today. Um, give it a due date of when I want to have students complete it by and again I'm just going to make something up here. Click on more options and then this page is where I can give the directions. So this is going to feel a lot like um, like what we've done in Google um, Google Classroom before. Um, so complete the assignment and then you can link you can link right in here. So you could do an external link and there's also a way, um, let me find it real quick. There's, there's a way to um, link this right to your Google Classroom as well. That's a better question for Dana um, on how to do that specifically. Um, this is an external link. And I got rid of my drive, so I can't do it. But you would put in you would put in the link to your um, link to your assignment in your from your Google Drive right here. Um, again, there is a way to do this directly with um, Google Drive. There we go. Here we go. Yeah, so it's not working right this second for some reason. I'm not sure why it is, but there there should be a way to do this. Um, so that's probably a, a kink that's being worked out at the moment on to make that happen. That you have to like give it permission or something. I you think. Do. Yeah, you do. Um, and there's there's some site level permissions that have to work, and then there's some class level permissions that have to work. Um, and I'm not, I, again, I don't, I don't have all the details on, on those mechanical pieces of this. Yeah, so Justin Halterman chimed in, so they're going to give more instructions about that later. Um, but again, complete the assignment link to here. Um, this, this is called economics. I can put anything in here I want. I can do this complete incomplete as points, as a letter grade. Um, how are they going to submit this to me? I want them to upload a file. Um, and you can select multiple of these. They can type the information right in there. They can give you a link from their Google Drive. They can even record a video if you want. So any of these things can be checked. Yeah. How many times can they, they submit this? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> all of these things are, are again, good. Do you know anything about that group assignment option? 
Um, very little. So you can set up groups in Canvas um, and you can actually make it so that kids can set up their own groups as well, but then it's a group submission to where multiple students student can submit and it submits from multiple of them. Um, because I don't have any kids yet, like it's hard to do that idea. My other question was, how do you, um, okay, so you're making your, mo how does the announcements versus module, they, like when you make a module, does it make the announcements? How does that kind of go together? No, you'd have, you'd have to set up the, um, the announcement. Let me see here. I got somebody going, so there should be a way for me to meet everybody. Yeah, I thought there was a way in here I could mute everybody here. I think it's under participants. Is it? Okay. Ah, uh, there we go. Thank you. Done. All right, Paige, unmute yourself again. So, so are you you're putting making the module, but then you're also posting it an announcement? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, you have to do both. So, like, if I if I put in my week three resources, um, this assignment that I just made. So that economics assignment I just made shows up here. Um, what you would need to do then when you go to an announcement is you would create a new announcement, week two, call it whatever, um, go to the, something that I called it, week two module, and you can link, link them right to this module So you choose course link. Okay. You go to modules and then you tell them, you know, which module you want it to go to. And that'll start them on the first page of the module. And then the module will let them hit next through just like we saw, um, saw my other virtual Virginia course, which is now not showing up. Let me see if this other one will show up. Yeah, it lets you just hit next, 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 all the way through all the activities you want them to do. So like if I went to the introduction here, I read the introduction and I hit next and that takes me to the second page of the module and I read that information and I hit next and it takes me to the next page of the module. Um, and certainly you should have assignments and quizzes and different discussion boards and things like that embedded in here. Right, I'm, I mean, I've been working on, Brittany and I have been working on a module together, but I didn't understand the announcement part. Okay, yeah, so the announcements is, think about the announcement this way. Um, this is like your history of what you've asked kids to do week after week after week, right? right. Um, so what we're doing here is we're, we're just creating this, um, this list of here's what we did week one, week two, week three. Um, and the benefit of that is with online learning, sometimes kids get behind and need to go back and find what they were missing. So we've given them a way to do that. Um, and especially in light of, you know, if we have a kid that gets COVID and is like legitimately sick for a couple of weeks, like, yeah, they need to have a simple way to go back and find what, what they were missing. And that's the point of the announcement. Is to okay. Them, no, that, that makes sense. I just okay. didn't know if it automatically made it for you or not. It does not. No, you have to, you have to set up the announcement. Okay. Um, so, hey, Gary. Yes. Hey, this is, uh, this is Wes. Hey, um, so what Robin was asking earlier mm -hmm. is <clears throat> she and I both have, uh, we use Kia a lot. We use uh, quizzes, Kubu. Uh, we have so many resources already done. Mm -hmm. How do you just quickly throw down a link to get out to those things without creating a bunch of new stuff in Canvas? Okay, so let's go into the modules for a second. And I'm going to mute myself back. Thank you. Okay. Yep. So what I, what I would suggest, and this is not going to be the happiest answer, um, happiest answer on the planet, but what I would suggest is in the module, if you, if you already know like what the sequence of activities is that you're doing, um, I would either do one of two things. So like if you're going to have the Kubu, and so let's just say you have, um, 
I'm going to go down here. Let's say you guys have like a rocks kubu, right? You might do it like this, create the rocks kubu in the more options. You tell them something like complete the rocks kubu and then you make that a link. So that's one option is just to create the individual assignments um, and then save that thing, go into your module and then add it to your module. The other way you could do it, Wes, if is you have a number of things that are together, like, you know, like on this particular day of class, I'm going to do these three activities. You would just create a, a really super simple page. You would say, you know, activities for Monday, August 31. <clears throat> We will start by reviewing this document and then you would just link. Again, I'm doing this super simple without a lot of um, a lot a lot of without a lot of information here. But you would just link to this document wherever that is. <clears throat> and you would say complete this kubu. So if you wanted to put a number of things together because they're similar, you would create it in a page. But in terms of having a way just to have a um, have a link in your module <clears throat> that is just a link, um, I've, not, I've not seen a thing. way to do that. There's an external link thing because we 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 did it. Yeah, there you go. Okay, Sorry. external URL. Okay, so there's your answer, Wes. That's actually a better way for what for what it sounds like you're doing. Hey Wes, I've been working on mine and I created like a page that is almost like a checklist. Does that make sense? So I put a checklist that has the links and kids, it looks like a checklist so they can go through and they're like, okay, done this, done, done. And I put all the external links there. Yeah, uh, Paola, I think that sounds good. I'm, um... I th I'm thinking that, especially for some of these kids, you know, we're not even going to see them. Um, it just needs to be super simple. And I really like the idea of the checklist. You just go boom, 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 boom. And so when the kid gets to the end of that, they know, hey, right, I'm done with this thing. And then I'll wait on my teacher for next week or something like that. So thank you. Yeah. So Wes, the way I would say the best way to do that is, is just to create the assignments in a module and then their checklist is is in the announcement basically. So they say, this is the work for today or this week or whatever, and here's the checklist. I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this. Okay, cool. Thank you for going over that. Uh, uh, yeah, um, yeah, no problem. Okay, um, let, me ha let me answer a couple of questions here. Um, there have been so many emails. Are we supposed to use demo virtual Virginia or can we log in now? Um, Andrea, you can log into the Salem um, Canvas site. So salemva.instructure.com. Uh, I've put this in here before, but I'll put it in again. You can log into you can log into our Salem Canvas. That's fine now. Um, Pam asked about five sections of ancient history. Um, so Pam, let me show you about sections in a second, and then you'll you'll know what to do there. Um, having a hard time wrapping around using this for lower grades with so much text for non-beginning readers. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that is, um, that is a tricky piece. Um, so what I would say, um, Ms. Ms. Schumeyer is, um, think about how you would, would intro this with the younger grades. Um, in a way that doesn't have text, right? So instead of having announcements that are all um, written like this, um, could you could you do an announcement that's a video of you um, explaining it instead of having a text-based one? Um, again, when I was when I was with the online learning program, um, when I was with the online learning program, that was one of the things that we we encouraged them to do 
is create those videos. Many of them didn't do it because they felt like it was really cumbersome and took a long time. Um, but for younger kids, I would say that's actually a really good, um, a really good idea. Harry, can I jump in on that one? Sure. It's Judith Painter at Andrew Lewis. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I took a workshop on immersive reader. Mm -hmm. And it will be integrating with Canvas. And I'll put a link to the, the information set in the chat. But immersive reader will allow it to actually read to the students. Okay. So they have um, a tool that will, will read, auto read the information for them. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And Ms. Carter noted about a canvas for elementary um, students. Yeah. And Ms. Brinkley, we, yeah, the link is in there. Um, not sure if my messages are showing up or not. Um, let me try that again. Yep, immersive reader. So yeah, so there's some good tools for um, the lower elementary grades as well. Um, let me, I'm going to cycle back here because I did have one other question about um, about sections and that's an important thing that we can, we can look at as well. So I'm going to close this one and go back to my home page for a second. Um, yeah, please, please connect with each other. Um, so one of the things on this home page is showing you is that um, at the very top, I have recent announcements. So with this, students really don't even have to click on announcements. I want them to know to do that, but they can look right here for the most recent announcement that has been posted. Um, and I have it set to be the two most recent announcements. And that way students right from the home page can go with one click and get to where they need to get um, to see what activity they're doing. So the way you do that, and this connects to sections too, Ms. Carter, so I'm doing both at the same time is in the settings link here at the bottom. In course details, this is where you can add a picture that will go on the dashboard page. This is where you name your course and give it a, a kind of a nickname as well. Um, there's all kinds of settings. Most of these settings you don't need to mess with, right? So like for me, I did the first three image name and course code. And then I basically ignore everything all the way down here to more options. And under more options, I did show recent announcements on the course homepage in two announcements. So they will get this week's announcement and last week's announcement. And you can change that number. You can make it as many as you want. Um, I think it defaults to three. I made it default to two just because I, I, I think two is the right number for the top of the page. But two or three is very reasonable. Um, and I, I, ba I basically did just that. Um, so these other things you don't really have to don't have to mess with too much unless you want to. So as you get more comfortable with Canvas, you might decide, oh, let me go back and look at if I want students to attach files. Um, do I want students to create new discussion topics? Um, that actually should be checked for the purpose of my help desk. Um, delete their own discussion post, organize their own groups. I unchecked that one. Um, hide totals and student grade summary. I'll talk about grades in a second because you notice that link is there, but we don't want Canvas to be our grade, our grade book. So that's gonna cause a lot of consternation. That has nothing to do with me. Save your, save your angry emails for Jamie Soltist. Um, but yeah, we don't want Canvas to be our grade book. Um, hide the grade distribution graph so kids don't see how other kids are doing. Um, and disable comments on announcements. I don't want them commenting on my announcements. I want them emailing me. So that is one section here at the bottom of the first tab, should make some changes. Um, Pam was asking about sections. I've created some sections for the different groups, Ms. Carter, but you can just as easily say, create a section for period one, right? So my first period kids are period one and my second period kids are period two and so on and so forth. Um, are we, I thought that, the school was creating our actual canvas classes and then we put our own stuff like a blank class and then we put stuff in it we create our own I that, thought that would that's my understanding is that we're creating our own because jamie told me not to make anything like that he said just play in the sandbox and that mm. okay 
Well, I don't want to. I don't want to say <laughs> that Jamie told you. I don't want to tell you to do something Jamie told you not to do. So. Yeah, he said just to play with the sandbox and not to make okay. actual classes. Yeah, I think Jamie and um, Jennifer have a, a session later this week, maybe. So that would be a good time to ask him that specific. Okay. But even then, like if we get those sections, um, this is where. Um, this is where you'll change the sections in your in your Canvas course. Um, the last piece on here is the navigation piece, and I'll check my chat because I have some chats going on. Um, again, the big idea that I mentioned earlier is we want to reduce these down to as little as possible. So what um, what the discussion was on Friday with Jamie and Dana Wells is we're we're, we're our goal here is to have five. The homepage, the syllabus, the announcement, the modules, and the grades. Um, so those are the five that we want to try to limit it to. You as the teacher will still be able to see all of these other ones. So it's not that they're, they're hidden from you, it's just hidden from the students. So again, when I go to my homepage on this, um, and I, I, I can still see all this, but if I look at this as a student, the student is going to see a lot less over here. And important point, the to do here on the right, um, the student can see, oh, look, here's my announcement. That's what the megaphone needs is announcement. Here are the assignments that are posted and dated um, for the first week of school. So the student can see all of these things super quickly and easily from their homepage. All right, let me go leave this and then check the chat here. Whoop, too far. All right, um, immersive reader, okay. Love that info too, if you don't mind sharing, please. Okay, that looks like a more elementary stuff. Okay, okay. So you have one Canvas course for each course you teach and then add periods for that course. Yeah, um, Andrea, that's that would be my recommendation. Now, um, Paige, is, Paige is saying there's potentially something different about that, that Jamie, Jamie yeah. and her. Yeah, I, I thought that Jamie said not to make any classes because the school was making them, I thought. Okay. I definitely okay. think we we'll check with Jamie first. Yeah, that's a, that's, a good, that's a good question to ask him if he has a different plan for that. But that wasn't, when we talked about this on Friday, that he didn't say that to me, but he might have just forgotten. So I don't, I don't, I don't know the, the full answer to that question. But Andrea, I would say yes. Like if I, as, a, as an online teacher, I don't want to have a different course for every section in Canvas. I want to have one course that I can break up into sections. That way I don't have to post the same announcement twice and I don't have to post um, the same syllabus twice and I don't have to import modules and pages and everything from one course to another. So um, that would be the side of that discussion I'm on. Gary, I have a question and is something different and I'm seeing it in your account as well. Okay. Um, you've been able to put your picture, your profile picture, or is it something that has been restricted by Salem? Your profile picture? Yeah, because when I go to account, um, the, the first time that I started working on, cam on Canvas before they gave us the sandbox and I created my account, mm -hmm. I went to settings and it allowed me to put a picture. And in the sandbox, it's not letting me put, add my picture. So kids know who I am. Oh. I thought it was there. That's how I did it on Yeah. Here. I would have thought it would have been here too. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't this, yeah, I don't I don't know that answer. Here. That's Paula okay. that sounds like a yeah. sounds like a site level um setting that somebody has done. So that needs to go through, you know, probably yeah. Dana to Jim Rifflin or whoever controls the site. Yeah, it looks like it says that if you can add your profile picture, your institution has restricted this feature. So yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Gary. And then Laura answered that question in the chat, Paula. Yes. Gary, if you have one class for multiple sections, when you have them in those groups, can you make it where you only see the work of a certain group when you're checking work? Um, I, let me ask a clarification question there. So you mean when you say groups? Like a period. Do you, okay, so you mean a section? Yeah. Okay. Um, yes is the answer to that. 
Okay. So let me, so like if you were recording grades, it wouldn't be trying to like fish out. You don't have to think about it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So let me, let me show you that for a second. So this is the grades menu. Um, and you can, I don't have any students in here yet to do it, but you can filter it based on sections. Okay. So if you just want to look at one section and not all your sections, you can do that in the grades menu. Okay. So this is what you see as a, a teacher. You're going to see um, this, this chart view for all of your students. Um, as a student, and this is really the more important point and why we have grades in here. And I'll, if you guys need to leave, obviously go ahead, but we'll continue the conversation for a few more minutes. Um, thank you guys for being here. If you have to leave, I appreciate your time. Um, this is what a student sees for grades. So they'll be able to see their score and they'll be able to click on um, a feedback button once it's been graded. So if you give them feedback, there'll be a little button in here for feedback. Um, but I have it set up so that um, they don't see any like summary grades. So that was that option that we checked in the settings so that they don't see these summary grades. Because again, the, the point of keeping the grades link on here is not because we want kids to see what their, their summary grade is. We want them to have to go to power school to do that. Um, but we do want kids to be able to click on their assignments to see what kind of feedback we gave them um, on those assignments. So that's, um, again, that's, an, that's a, a point um, a point here about what we're doing with grades. This, if we could change this name from grades to feedback, I think we would. Um, but this should be really more about feedback than it is about a grade. Um, but let me go in page. So if you guys haven't, um, let's see, probably none of you have. So let me do this. So once I have kids that have done assignments, what I can do um, as the teacher is go into that assignment. So like once I have kids that have finished, um, and let me do the quiz. I, I, it doesn't matter, I guess. Um, come on, work with me. There you go. Yeah, once I have kids that have finished this, you can use the speed grader tool um, and this makes it really easy to navigate between students. Again, I only have one student in my course right now. Um, and then put a comment in, go to the next student, put a comment in, go to the next student, put a comment in, go to the next student. And their work will show up in this window. Um, so I, I found this close to the convenience of Google Classroom for doing this kind of thing. Not quite as nice, but it was still, it's still workable um, to give good feedback on student work and get through them pretty quickly. Um, this way. So this is this is where you go to grade student work. Um, and these assignments can be these like you can create an assignment for one class and not another. Um, if you have if you have sections created. Uh, let this finish loading. So right now it's assigned to everyone. Um, but I could assign it to a course section instead of to everyone if I wanted to. Um, so yeah, so all kinds of there's all kinds of features in here. It's actually, it's, it's a little bit overwhelming, um, all the things you can do in Canvas, which is again, why we want to try to limit it as much as possible. All right, thanks Grant, appreciate you too. Um, okay, so I, I think I've covered the big ideas. So just to recap really quickly here, um, try to limit your, your courses to these five links. Make your homepage um, a fun introduction that kids will want to watch and then tell them where to go so that their workflow makes sense. Um, I can't stress that point enough. If a kid understands the workflow, how to get from their homepage to what they need to do that week, and if that process is as simple as possible, like that is going to be the best case scenario for students to be successful with their online learning because nothing gets students stopped up more than if they can't, um, can't get started. Okay. All right. So now I, I'm I'm only six minutes over time. So I, I think I'm I think I'm done with my part. So I'm happy to hang out, answer questions, have a conversation, you know, whatever you guys want. Because again, I'm just all about trying to make everybody's life as 
as simple as possible in this craziness. Uh, okay, I'm going to read from Maggie um, what it will look like for students when they are trying to navigate multiple courses. Will all announcements come up on a home page for them or will they need to manually click in the courses? Um, Maggie, that's a great question. So let me, let me do this. So if I do student view, in the course, you're going to see all these to do's. Students can also go to their calendar and it's going to block me. Oh no, it didn't block me. That's great. It's going to go to their calendar so they can see everything that all of their courses have put in in their calendar. Um, so it'll be there as well. And on their dashboard, this is where it blocks me. On their dashboard, there's going to be a to do list on the right hand side as well. So even though I can't look at it in the student view um, because of just the the funky way that feature works. If I were able to go into this as a student view, everything that the student would want to see would be over here on the on the right hand side. So let me, if I go to my virtual Virginia one, um, you can see it's over here. So the to do, I have some grading I need to do for my summer class. And then I completed the Canvas course. So it actually is giving me the feedback on the Growing with Canvas course. So it'll show you over here for students what they have to do, announcements and assignments that are coming up, and then feedback that, you're, that you have given them as a teacher. So it does show you everything from this um, dashboard page. Okay, you guys are all welcome. Thank you, thank you guys for being here, taking some time on your Monday morning to do that. And if anybody needs anything, please feel free to reach out and ask. Um, I'm happy to I'm happy to provide other details um, that you might want to know. If I know them, I don't know everything. Just pretend like I do sometimes. Yeah, so Sherry, that's a good question. So I would say, like, honestly, like I'm building these courses, like I'm going to use them. Um, so I don't know if if Salem is going to like, give me a different computer science foundations course. But even if they do, I'm just going to import all of the stuff that I'm building in this course that I made into the one they give me. So like, again, I'm I'm starting to build my courses as if these are the courses that I'm using. And if that ends up not being the case, I'm going to take the, the five minutes per course that it will take to import from one place to another. Um, so I'm, st I'm, I'm starting, like I'm, I'm building. And again, I have, you know, I'm probably like the elementary school folks where I have, I have five different courses I need to set up. So elementary school folks have to do all their core courses. Um, yeah, you can just create an unpublished course. Um, or you can create a published course. It doesn't matter if it's published or not because you don't have any students in there. Um, so as long as you don't have any students in the course, it can be published or unpublished and it doesn't matter. The difference between published and unpublished is students see a published and students don't see unpublished. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a really good question and I don't know the answer. Um, if, if SCS is going to do that, if we'll have to do that, I can tell you if we have to do that, it's not that hard. Um, and it's not that time consuming to be honest with you, but I don't, I don't know the answer. Um, isn't, isn't that what Paige was getting at? It might be, um, Mr. Halterman, it might be. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt, but I, I kind of thought that's what Paige was getting at was that they would upload the students and yeah. then. That, that makes perfect sense, Yeah, 100%. That makes perfect sense. Um, yeah, I just don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Again, I think Jamie has a session coming up. Um, that, that, would be, that would be a good time to ask him that question. There you go. Well, again, I think, again, even if, even if they create a course that has students loaded in it, the process of importing from the course that you're playing with right now to your course that they create for you is, is super simple. 
Um, so you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna waste any time creating stuff because it's not like that that stuff is gonna go away. It's gonna be available in the course that you're playing with right now, and then it's just an import over here. Let me let me show you um, let me show you that piece real quick. Um, yeah, so I can import existing content. And I just pick whatever I want. So in this case, it would be copy from a Canvas course. And so I just pick which course I'm pulling it from, right? So like if I wanna pull something from my sandbox or from any of these other courses that I've made, um, I just pick that. And then I can either do everything from the course or I can pick out specific things. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would again, I would say make it and feel totally totally comfortable that you're not wasting any time if you make it. Um, it's either gonna be one of two things, either they're gonna just put students in the courses that we've already made, or they're gonna make us new courses and then we just have to import. So that's, that, those are the two possibilities. Good. Again, I hope I hope it saves people some stress and I hope it saves people some time to focus on the more important thing, which is our instruction and assessment. Yeah, you're telling me. <laughs> All right, I have no idea how many people are still here. 10 people, 10 people, nine people. All right, and again, like, I'm, I'm hanging out. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys might have. Thank you guys so much for being here. Sherry, it was good to meet you and talk to you. Yeah, but I don't, I don't have anything left. So if you guys are, if you guys are good, go ahead and head out. Otherwise I married the best shoot. Tell him that. <laughs> Oh goodness. Yeah, when I see him, we'll we'll start a little family feud. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs>